All right, let's get it rolling. I'm getting fired up because I mean, EXP time, you gotta get the energy high and get it rolling. Um, Mitch, what's our topic again today? Because I can't pull it up on my computer while I'm on with you. Yeah, give me a second, because I just- uh... Finding ideal clients, right? Yes, finding ideal clients. Yes, thank you. We at, least one of us right off the bat. at least one of us is paying attention, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that's why Cam's going first because he knows the topic and he knows the subject. And he kind of got, uh, you know, he got Jones last week for really contributing. He tried to, I mean, we went over five minutes, but I want to give him time today. So I want to kick it off with him. Cam, so give me some insight right now. I know it's, the markets have been challenging everywhere, right? People know this, the rates are going up. Uh, a lot of the other agents I'm talking to are trying to figure out how to get people motivated and going. There's a lot of kind of looky-loo, wait and see, going to wait till after this crazy election. So how are you getting people to move off the fence right now in this market to get motivated people to actually take advantage of the market? Yeah, that's the... Uh... That's the big challenge right now, right, Pete, is uh, as the markets change and they shift, let's say, into more of a buyer's market across the country, which we've been in here um, for over about 12, 15 months down here in South Florida. So we've seen that shift, I think, a little bit sooner than the rest of the country is currently seeing it. Um, but it's a challenge. And, and it is. It's a challenge. There's not a one uh, one easy answer that fixes it. What I will say, and this is this is going back to um, as markets shift, we have to shift with them. And when we go into a more of a buyer's market, like what we're going into, right? More of a little longer listings are sitting on the market a little bit longer. Buyers are being more picky, choosy. Um, you really have to always be going back to your client's motivation. Do they need to make this move or do they want to? Both are okay. There's no right or wrong answer, but it's very important that when you have a client or you have a lead come in, you are the one that's able to qualify and identify the situation that this client is in. And that's going to be the secret to helping agents in this market stay busy is that you need to continue going through leads and prospects. Uh, let's call them B clients, right? Continuing qualifying them, going through them to find the clients. Um, for example, we just took a listing last Friday. The, uh, the, the, the owners, super sweet people, but they're in their late 80s, you know, very elderly, and they have to move back home. They have to. They need health care. They need someone to care after them or take care of them. These folks have to sell. There's no option. They're already left the home. It's just sitting there vacant, costing them money now. And these are the types of properties and the types of clients that we as agents and we as team leaders need to be making sure that we are bringing in, we're qualifying and we're identifying so that we can be working with those A-type uh, A type quality uh, clients. Now, the second question, and I'm going to be real brief because I want everybody else to talk on this subject. But the second part of that question, uh, Pete, was how are we motivating them? right? The truth is we're not. You can't force motivation, you guys. So everybody on this call, that's super important is that when you qualify someone, when you speak to them, if there's no motivation there, if they're just in fantasy land, if they just want to, you know, hope and pray and, 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 you know, maybe one day they do, maybe one day they don't, you guys, that is not going to be the client that you're going to be able to work with and sell a property in that 30, 60 day window that, you know, typically we like to keep our, our prospective clients in. So, uh, you're not going to change their motivation, but what you will change is who you're working with. So the, the trick to this, you guys, and I'm going to be short and I maybe I can chime in at the end, but the trick to this is go through and continually find new prospects, new clients, and then really dig in and find their motivation. Be curious about what their goals are, what they're trying to achieve. And then if you're able to help them, great. If you're not, that's okay too, because we can't help everybody in these more challenging markets. That's just the truth. Some people, they're just not able or willing to either sell or able or ready to buy. And that's okay. Put them in our CRM, do proper follow-up, have your drip set up for them so that you can continue uh, being in contact with them. But then you're going to spend your time going out and finding those A-plus clients. So that's my biggest tip right now. I'm, I'm really excited to, to hear everybody else's kind of uh, perspective on this. But that is what we're seeing down here. And, and that's really what I think most agents need to to hyper focus on is is just getting through more people well i think that's a good point and you have to be able to identify who's motivated and who isn't you're not going to motivate an unmotivated person 
I, I mean, it's like smacking your head against a wall. You can motivate them in different ways. I think it's a phenomenal time. I'm calling all my people right now and say, this is the time to buy. This, this period of time right now for the next month or two is going to be the, the time to buy. Because once they start dropping those rates, even though inventory is building, which is great, it's going to create a great market, you guys. There's going to be way more competition in the spring. We know that's the Super Bowl of real estate. That's the number one market. And you got to get people off the fence, you know, get them away from, well, rates keep going up, 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 do a buy down. There's always a solution to every problem, you know, have, have the seller contribute to a buy down. Cause I can, I can assure you right now, the showings on these houses or these current listings have fallen off dramatically. And these sellers are starting to panic. They're saying, why well, haven't had any offers? So what should we do? You know, they, they think they're going to get an offer in 48 hours or a week or two weeks. I mean, most of the markets around the United States, especially the luxury markets, the average days on markets around 58 days and, and, and it's going up. We're so at 90 down here in Florida, bird. Pete, 90. Whoa. Well, that's why, because everybody's going to the early bird special for dinner at four o'clock. That's why, right? That's why it takes 90 days because you guys have a shorter showing period. Can't show in the afternoon unless you're going to take them to the early bird special at four. Right. Massa knows that. So let's go over to Gary. Gary, so what are you doing to drum up business right now and get people off the fence and either getting people motivated to put their house on the market or motivated to buy a house? Yeah, I mean, I, I share the sentiment. You're not going to motivate somebody or and, and that's not our job. Right. Um, our, our job is to help guide guide people. So right now, the opportunity is with, you know, with with less uh, transactions happening and whatever the case is giving us a lot more time to focus on the activities and the, the lead generation activities. And so one of the things that we're really focused on is going back through all of our database and trying to make, you know, making those contacts and identifying, you know, who, who has the motivation, the conversation is, you know, are you still looking to take that action, whatever that might be buy sell, whatever the case before the end of this year, or is this something that you're looking forward, forward for to next year? So at least we can then like segregate that database and know who, what conversations that we're focusing on next year versus, you know, who's got motivation this year. And again, even the, you know, with the answer to that question, most people that may normally pawn you off or, eh, you know, hum and haw, if they then nail it down, yeah, next year is going to be, you know, when I want to take the action. Okay. When is that March? Great. Now you have a conversation, you know, appointment, if you will set for, for March and you can set that up in your database. You're building that pipeline and getting them to kind of commit, right? A lot of people right now have optimism for next year for one reason or another. And let's, you know, let's kind of pin them. I don't say pin them down, but, you know, get them to commit on that. So we're building that 30, 60 day, uh, 90 day pipeline for the following year and setting those conversations and knowing that we really don't have to focus on that particular client. The, the right now clients that, you know, just uh, demographically that I feel like are taking action right now are investors, right? Whether they want to buy a home before the end of the year for, you know, whatever, you know, tax reasons, people that might need to sell for tax reasons or trying to, you know, take a certain action. So finding those conversations in your database, whether those are past clients um, you know, other investors or people through your database that expressed interest sometime in the, you know, in the middle of the year or beginning of the year that maybe you did a home valuation for, maybe you had a consultation, but wasn't quite ready yet. Some things may, might have changed. So with, you know, if there's any downtime, fill it with having conversations with people, you know, whether you are door knocking and trying to just stack your pipeline, but trying to have that conversation, are you ready? You know, is it something you need to take, uh, take action on before the end of the year or next year? And just really separating those uh, separating those clients. Um, we've got seven working weeks left of the year. Just kind of calculated that right now. It's just on a one on one with one of my team members. So it's like we write. You know, we're doing a lot of CMAs for our clients or, or uh, equity evaluations right now. Getting on. You know, getting in front of each of our past clients, trying to create the those conversations also. But we're doing it right now as opposed to like before Thanksgiving, doing the holiday call because we still have time to, to get a transaction closed before the end of the year by making those calls right now. We probably have two to three weeks left of getting those clients on board, prepared, and like, you know, taking action. Otherwise it's a next year, you know, it's a next year call. So the next two to three weeks have to be really focused on 
pumping the well and, and taking action and having as many conversations as possible. But that's really the only way I feel like you can win each week now and, and how you're going to identify those clients who are motivated. No, that's good stuff. I, you, yeah, you can't be a secret agent, you guys. You have to be proactive. You can't be reactive. I think a lot of agents don't even have a plan every day on what they're doing to get business moving. You know, there's tons of things you can do to get business moving, but first you got to show up. A lot of agents aren't showing up. They're just kind of throwing their hands up saying this market sucks and nothing's happening. And guess what? That's what you're going to get more of if you keep saying that. So you got to you got to shift that and you got to just keep throwing stuff against the wall every day, but you have to have a plan that you execute every day in order to make it happen. I mean, that's, that's the key. That, that was great stuff, Gary. Um, let me ask you this in your market, which is actually my market too. What are you seeing? Um, I, again, I have seen the definite slowdown or, uh, leveling off in the in the luxury market, I think homes over or the markets over two two and a half million dollars uh, have have definitely slowed down. And the people that are in that market are very slow to act. Um, they're taking their time to make decisions. Again, I've got a couple of properties in that price point. People are coming in and showing them, but uh, again, taking slow slow to, to react. Here, I'm um, uh, because it's come to our attention for the year. Oh, um, and then you know. Uh, under that, um, again, there's properties on the market, but I still feel like even in the million, like things under a million dollars, I'm seeing are going under contract pretty quickly, right? But oh, like right around that million, a little bit over that, I'm I'm also seeing, you know, not very many people coming into open houses. I'm not, you know, people that express interest seem to fizzle out, you know, pretty quickly. So um, again, it's really, I feel like we're, how do I put it? people are just taking a lot of time to make decisions, right? We just opened an escrow yesterday on a property, been on the market for 38 days, um, starting to get activity on a property that we listed in the 600 range. Um, again, that's a little bit busier. And then for like another listing I have that's listed at 3.7, we're getting 20, 25 people in the open houses every weekend. We're getting showings and calls and you know, one thing or another, people are being very specific about making decisions and moving forward where last year or two years ago, we weren't really having those, that mindset. So there's opportunity out there, but I do, I do want to say that I, I feel the shift uh, or this, you know, it's been a little bit slower in terms of demand, but the interesting thing is you probably noticed this, the, the median price point in September went up from October. It still keeps going up, but you're still noticing the, the list to sales price um, you know, starting to fall to like 94%, you know, 97% where it used to be at 102. So you can see shifts in different ways, but pricing still seemingly going up. So it's a little bit confusing. Um, but anyways, I hope that answered the question. Sorry if I'm rambling. No, it was good. It was <laughs> good. Let's go. Okay. So let's stay in, in the greater San Diego market. Let's go over to Matt Badiata. And just, I want everybody to understand he's not bragging. He's just applying for a job. He's trying <laughs> to find somebody to give him a job. <laughs> Maddie, what are you doing right now? I know you deal mostly with sellers, but how are you keeping sellers motivated in a market where rates are rising, ball, you know, buyers have fallen off, or you're getting some showing sporadically here and there, and then the buyers say, oh, yeah, it's nice, and nobody motivates them to do any like, or they just don't have the capacity to move forward. Yeah. So I'm, I'm letting all my sellers, I'm really trying to educate all my sellers on the direction that I see the market going and that, you know, playing the long game in selling your house is a mistake. You know, I always like to say, you know, selling real estate's a sprint. It's not a marathon. We don't want to sit on the market for three, four or five months and just wait it out because we're going to end up getting less. And for the people that think, well, you know, maybe next year or after the election or, you know, all these different things, I'm trying to kind of scare them and say, you know, look, we don't know where the market's going to be in three months, six months. I'm, But I got some pretty good you know, educated guesses. I think the inventory is going to be higher. Um, I think prices are going to be coming down. I don't think that interest rates are going to go down that much. Um, they might go down a teeny bit, but it's not going to make an appreciable difference. So, 
you know, now is the time. So I'm trying to, to really motivate all my sellers and some of them, it takes a while. I mean, I've got some people, I've got one listing I've had on the market since the end of July. I mean, gosh, what is that? Four months now. And, you know, on paper, it's priced competitively. Right. And, but guess what? We have, we haven't, we haven't sold the house and we've been on the market since July. So what does that tell you? <laughs> We're priced yeah, too maybe high. That, you know? that, may, that may be a you know result of that actually sector of the market or that location. And how often are you price breaking or, or re or relaunching that property? Well, shoot, the, the sellers are just like, you know, this is our number. So I, I haven't been able to, to get them to drop the price. Um, but I call them and it talk to bucks them. A week? I could probably get them to drop it a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. Which would probably say help a little bit, right? Yeah. Just yeah. say I have a hundred reasons why we have to keep it moving if you want to get to where you yeah. want to go. So I'm, I'm seeing, um, you know, definitely seeing uh, the market is a little sluggish, I would call it. Um, mm -hmm. And as far, you know, the way that we're, I think I may have mentioned this on a previous week's call, but, you know, one thing that we have now that we didn't have uh, for a long time is we have expired listings, we have canceled listings, and we have, um, we actually have for sale by owners. And and those are a really good source for seller leads. You know, I used to get all of my business from expireds and canceleds and for sale by owners. So they're out there. They're not going to, you know, one way to look at it, the way I look at expires is, you know, you can spend a bunch of money doing a bunch of marketing, um, you know, marketing to the general public, right? So imagine you're a, you're a guy that sells, you know, I don't know, you're a car dealership, right? Are you going to try to sell to everybody, you know, the, just the general population? Or if I gave you a list and I said, these are all people whose car just got destroyed in an accident and they need a new car. Those are the those are the people to, that you're going to have a lot higher percentage of success with those people. So I think Gary made a great point, which is it's always shocking to think how many weeks we have left in the year. And when you figure how many weeks we have left in the year, you got to factor in. We got a week of Thanksgiving. We got probably two weeks of Christmas. You know, um, it we're really at the end here. And so the main thing you got to always be doing, what business are we in? We're in the lead generation business. And so you've got to be constantly focused on generating leads. That's our job. And there's a million different ways to do it. And they all work if you actually do them. Um, but you have to do it. So um, I, I'm to me, it's not so much trying to find the right people. It's just, you know, you got to have, you got to have volume of leads so that you can, you get, you know, people to work with. Right. And so whether that's calling your past clients or, you know, doing open houses or knocking on doors or sending out mailers, et cetera, all of it works. And the, the important thing is not to get talked into um, this, this, you know, theory that all oh, the market's horrible and no one wants to buy anything and the market's so slow and no one's putting their house on the market because it's, it's not the case. There's deals happening out there every day. So. Yeah. Just find the people who are motivated. If everybody's going left, make sure you go right. If everybody's going right. Make sure you go left. That's it. Yeah. I mean, that's the big thing. There's, but there's money think, in the street. There's gold in the streets. You just yeah, have to I go think get it. If when you're talking about motivating sellers, I mean, honestly, it really does make a difference when you, when you spend 20 minutes on the phone with them and educate them about, you know, market cycles and the direction the market's going and that we're, you know, like here in San Diego, I just had a, I just dropped a, a listing $200,000 and I explained to the seller and I sent him the data so he could see it. I said, look, we're seeing price reductions in your area. We're seeing price reductions everywhere and we're just helping everybody else sell. So we got to drop it. So we dropped it $200,000 a week later. Guess what? We had an offer. So there you go. You got to just be wow, constantly hammering these guys. And they're all resistant to it because, you know, they might read in the newspaper that the market's good and the median price is still X amount and blah, blah, blah. But they they just need to be educated. And that's our job. Yeah, that's the key. I think that's number one th key is communication and education. If you can stick with those and having real 
conversations with either buyers or sellers. That's really important. It's what, like my dad used to always say to me, and he ingrained this in my head, you guys, all it takes is 10 seconds of courage, right? 10 seconds <laughs> of courage to really tell them or, or show them what's happening. You know, but the problem is, is most agents do it. They say, oh yeah, yeah, let's uh, let's wait. We'll we'll give it another month and let's see if we find the right person. I'm I'm digging through the haystack, see if I can find the needle. You know, oh, somebody told me it only takes one. So <laughs> hopefully we'll find that one person. Everybody else has gone by it. You've only had 3,900 uh, people visit it online and not one person's made an offer, but that's not a sign. You know, you have to be realistic and be upfront with them and treat their house as if it was yours and guide them and care. That's the big thing. All right. That's awesome, Maddie. Hey, I want to go over to Ian, otherwise known as the Investor Agent Nation and Randy Zimnot. He's out in North North Florida. And uh, thank God you and your family are OK with all those hurricanes coming through. Here's my question for you. What are you seeing on the investor side is the is some of the projects that your investors doing, are they sitting, are they still moving pretty quickly? And what are you telling buyers who are looking at some of these investor properties and trying to lowball them? Yeah, so I'm gonna speak from a Southern California perspective because I, I don't do business in Florida. I'm not licensed yet. Um, I track it. I know it. Uh, I'm learning it. But really, my business happens in Southern California. That's where my team is. So to answer your question, so w with investors, uh, a couple of things. One, I, I would say we are, I'm telling them to list their properties as soon as possible if we could. If we don't get any offers by mid-December, we're going to take the property off the market. So we don't keep adding to the days on market. Because like Gary said that, or whoever said some that, that that doesn't help, right? That only hurts you. And then we're going to come back on the market, usually second week of January. And I'm only, I'm using just past two years data, right? To make that decision. Um, the last two years, the market really dropped in the last fourth quarter, both years in San Diego, right? Um, last year, it was about five to 8%. Two years ago, it was more like, 10 to 13, 15% in some pockets, right? Uh, now, I don't anticipate the market drop 10, 15%, but I do anticipate a drop uh, in the fourth quarter. Now that the rates went up, the it, that theory that, you know, kind of got uh, a curveball when rates all of a sudden dropped by almost three quarters of a point uh, a month ago, but now we're back to where we were a month ago, right? Where conventional loans are about 7%. Um, FHA, VA, and the sixes again. Uh, so I, I do anticipate the market slowing down because there was literally a sweet spot. We listed a property when the market, when the rates dropped for an investor and we did underprice it still strategically because I didn't know how the market is going to react. And we got eight offers on it and people overbid and we closed on it 50, uh, 50,000, I think, or 40,000 over list, right? But that was, a, we hit literally a sweet spot. Right, because the rates drop, we we're in that great price point that Gary is talking about under a million. But I wouldn't anticipate getting the same result today, just because not not just because because rates went up, right? They're back up to where they were. So basically, when I'm talking to a seller, regardless if it's an investor or traditional, because I have a few traditional that I'm going to be uh, putting on a market actually soon, uh, is I'm telling telling them the same thing. Listen. We might not get anything you like. Doesn't mean we won't get any offers or any showings, but you just might not get offers you you like, and it's okay. We'll, we can wait it out, but let's take it off the market because what can happen is Zillow might see that listing in January as a completely new listing, and the days on market might reset. Right, that's a very high probability, and that's what I'm after is for the audience, the the public that are that's out there on. Trulia and Zillow and Redfin to see the property as a new listing, right? And, and I think it comes down to what you said, Pete, right? Making incremental changes to your listing that initiates a notification is the key, right? In this type of markets. And I don't care if you're dropping it by a hundred dollars or a thousand or crap, raise it by 
a hundred, but what it does, it creates a notification to the consumers that have filters set up for that particular area, right? And that's what you're after is eyeballs, right? Uh, now, I'm also after days on market being as little as possible too, right? Like most of us. So that's why that's what I'm telling the sellers. Buyers, man, I'm telling them this is your season. This is your hunting season, right? If you're an investor, like, oh man, like, please, like try not to travel as much and go after what's available right now that's coming up because sellers are going to get desperate, right? The ones that have to sell, like this is this is always the best quarter for mo for investors if you are pressing in, okay. So this is the time to rack up inventory that uh, on flipping that you can then put on the market in the perfect time, usually March April, right? Uh, so that's what I'm telling investor clients uh, of mine, and also disregard the list price, like. I literally, I have an investor client that is looking for their primary home or, or was because they're about to close on it this week. Uh, and they had re really small pocket, right? And they're, of course, they're not afraid of work. So they wanted something they could basically finish themselves, right? Well, there was a property sitting on a market for 1.3 million where the that's more like the after repair value. It was like 1.35, but that's the list price. And it was sitting there for months. Needed work. We submitted an offer at 1.1. They countered 1.150. We then ended up going 1.115, right? And, and then they countered in their counter saying, as is in four different ways, in four different sentences. That's how important it was for them. Like, oh, you better don't ask for any credits. You better not do it. They literally wrote it out four ways in four sentences, right? And I told my client, I was like, look, as is to me just means based on what I see, what you see, right? With your eye, like, but if we find a sewer that's clogged or whatever, or we find mold, as is goes out the window. It doesn't matter anymore. As long as we have the reports to back it up, right? Because now you have a seller that's technically cornered, right? Because now they have reports that have been emailed to their agent that they have to now present to the new buyer if they decide to cancel my contract with my client. So guess what happened? We found a mold. We found mm -hmm. the roof needed to be replaced where my client didn't think it needed to be. We found 13,000 in termite. We asked for 42 grand guys, right? 42 grand, they gave us 20. My client was stoked. Were they happy? No. Did they still give us the credit? Yes, because it was well justified and it didn't matter that as his language that that agent put in the counter, right? So don't be afraid. I guess the point of the story is don't be afraid right now to get aggressive, but be strategic, have an explanation for it, have reports for it. If you're an investor, one of the best ways to get deals right now would be calling the listing agent and say, hey, because what happens is like, imagine Matt Batiata right now, if that property he has on the market was overpriced and he needed a ton of work and his seller was stubborn, right? And got a, a few offers that they rejected. After four months, that seller is worn out in most cases. And so is the agent. So now the agent is going to start revealing information to you and tell you how worn out they really are and tell you like, oh man, you know what? We've been on a market, like this is what happened with that one. We've been on a market for four months. We got this type of an offer. They said, no, I don't know how they're going to react to, to your 1.1, but maybe because it's a family buying it, maybe they're blah, blah, blah. They, he revealed the whole story to us, right? And that's what's going to happen in the fourth quarter on listings with, with, with our sitting on a market that need work and the agents, they want to sell the freaking house. So they're going to tell you what's going on and then you can position yourself and say, look, if I can get my inspections done prior to submitting an offer where I can put an offer that's as is, no contingencies, what do you think, Mr. Agent, right? Because that's a powerful offer, right? Regardless of price, it doesn't matter. Regardless of price, no contingencies, close in seven days, right? And you, you see what the listing agent's reaction is. And there, in a lot of cases, they'll be like, you know what? I can't promise it, but that's a very powerful offer in terms of no contingencies that my client, who knows, might consider now, right? 
So that's one strategy that you can implement with investors that are willing to spend the money and gamble, right? Because it's going to require some, some money. That's part of the game of an investor. You have you might have to get, you know, if there is a crack in a foundation, if there is mold, whatever, you might have to spend some money, but then you gather those reports. Now you know what you're up against, and then you submit an offer with all that into taking into account, but it's as is. And I guarantee you, a lot of those offers will get accepted in the fourth quarter. But so anyway, I'll stop there. I'll let somebody else talk. <laughs> no, oh, I, listen, I thing. think that's I think that's great. I think somebody has to get Matt a towel because he's sweating after what Randy just said, because Randy's going to pound him in the ground on the fourth quarter. That's right. You know, listen, you guys, we're right now in a season with a reason. That's what I call it. The season with a reason. Either the seller has a reason why they're trying to sell or they can't do things, or the buyer has a reason to buy and they have a reason on why they want repairs or a credit. You know, my father always taught me this, and I'll share this with you guys. The best recipe you can ever have in your life in real estate is when you have a seller who wants to sell and you have a buyer who needs to buy. That's the best recipe. Our goal is to bring those people together. Don't believe the hype what the listing agent tells you. Don't believe the hype if you have a listing on what the buyer's agent tells you. It's irrelevant because last time I checked, typically the listing agent doesn't own the, doesn't own the property and the buyer's agent is not going to live in the property. So don't get caught up into that. Keep asking questions and, and keep open-minded. Go ahead, Randy. One more thing for you guys listening about drawing up more business, uh, traditional business in this case, is most of you know I'm in a assumable um, niche, right? Uh, I get a lot of leads uh, that are looking for buying a property with an assumable loan or, or selling their property, leveraging their assumable loan that has a low interest rate, usually 3%. Uh, 4% and under, right? Which, which is attractive in today's interest rate environment. So for you guys that are out there that are bored and have nothing to do and you don't have business, right now in a buyer's market, you want to have buyers, quite honestly, right? So how do you get buyers? Well, look for listings right now that are advertising assumable loans, right? The agents that are savvy. They are asking their sellers about this. What kind of loan do you have? VA, FHA, what is the rate? The ones that ask that question, and if they see that the rate is low, they're going to advertise it usually in the first sentence of the public remarks, if they're smart, right? Because it will draw more attention to their listing, right? So look for those and then market that property on your social media with that, but, but lead the marketing with the low rate, right? And then, so that's one. Now, if you might be like, well, Randy, there's no properties listed with uh, marketing it. I know a lot of agents freaking don't do it. So I'm going to give you a website where you can actually look up active listings to see what kind of loan is on that property. And if, if you can see that it's a VA or FHA loan, reach out to the listing agent and say, hey, Mr. Listing Agent, I see that you have this great property on the market. It's been on the market for a couple of months. I've noticed that I think your client has a VA loan. Can you confirm that? Because if they do, I just wanted to give you a tip that there might be an opportunity for you to market it with an assumable loan. Can you get the details? Because I might have some interested clients for that type of a property, right? They get you the details. Now you have a market property that you can market that that listing agent probably still won't market because they don't even know what the heck is going on, right? So now you have an off-market property technically with an assumable loan, even though it's active on the MLS, but no one's going to find it as an assumable because the agent is not marketing it, right? So you lead, when you're marketing an assumable to the public, you lead with the rate. And that's it. People just want to be like, what, 3% rate? And Because you, you, all you want is a phone call. So you can build rapport, build trust, take their wish list down, and they might not buy that one, but now you have a buyer, right? I'll stop there. But assumable is the way right now in this interest rate as it went back up, this is the way to draw up uh, opportunities with buyers right now that you can close maybe this year, but most likely in the beginning of next year. That's awesome. Okay. That's great stuff, you guys. And hopefully you're getting some tips here. You know, you just got to keep it moving forward and you got to keep massaging it and don't take anything personally. That That's my piece of advice. Don't take it personally when you're trying to find the ideal customer right now, or you're trying to get an offer accepted, communicate well, be nice to the other agent and whatever they tell you, don't take it personal. That's the big thing. 
All right, let's go out to the desert. Ross, the boss stout is out there. He's making it happen. His hat's on backwards, which means he's really getting down to business. How are you finding your ideal customers in this type of market right now out in your marketplace? Well, thanks. We've been in the great freeze out here, even though it's hot. Um, our market has literally been frozen. Prices aren't moving. Transactions are slow. Our market is essentially the same as what it was in June of 2022, plus or minus a couple percentage points on pricing. So that's what we've been dealing with out here. When it comes to the buyers, I'll just, Matt said it, lead generation is everything. And Randy found a great hook of how to get people in. And it's all about qualifying and finding the motivation of your buyer. You need to find your lead gen space that's going to bring people to you. In this market, I found it's a quantity play to find the quality. You have to deliver yourself quantity of leads in order to find the quality. If we're just going to focus on one or two uh, sources of lead gen, um, we're going to be cutting ourselves short. So we need to find out how we can generate the most people towards us. And preferably, in my opinion, we want to work with buyers. Uh, buyers are the now money. Of course, we want to stack up listings as we can. But um, if you can focus on buyer lead gen as a standalone agent in today's market, that's when you're going to be putting money in your pocket. So for me, 65% uh, of people start their search online. 65% of people, or excuse me, it's way more than that. 65% of people find their agent online. How is your online presence? If you are slow, you need to find your hook. Like Randy, advertise a low rate on, on an assumable. That's getting somebody in. You're not trying to sell them that assumable. You're trying to get a qualified buyer. Find what your hook is, put it on the internet, and deliver people to your inbox. And then you have to have a strategy, right? So thankfully, we're blessed with a, with a big lead gen platform on the Zillow Flex. But there's a way to qualify people when they come in. And I'm all about making people motivated. What is their, what's going to make them tick? Like I, I'm not, uh, I, yes, I want to be passive and, and we're going to do it on their time. I'm proposing change, changes on a buyer's time. It's on an agent's time. We're bringing the XP changes on the person's time, but we need to find a way to escalate that timetable and find a way to show them that now is the best time. And I truly do believe that now is the best time for a buyer to buy. The market isn't flooded. You get to choose what house you want. You're not just reacting to an availability. This is the now time to buy. So when when you do find your hook, when you find the way to pe drive people towards you, uh, how are you going to talk to them? Are you going to send them a templated email that's impersonal? Are you like what what is your plan? You need to get them on the phone. Um, People who meet their uh, agent in person, they're going to choose them two thirds of the time to work with continually. So the first person they meet needs to be you. You need to get an appointment with them, whether it's a buyer consultation or preferably you're just setting up a property to view. So whether you've qualified them or not as a, as a hot buyer, get them in the market space to make them a hot buyer. It's not a waste of time. I, I haven't met anyone who's like, you know what? I have like 45 escrows open right now myself. I don't know what I'm doing. Like, it's not that market. So get out in the market. If you're not placing your body in the market, you're not there yourself. So go out, meet these people at a property, meet them at a copy shop next to the neighborhood they really love and have a listing in your pocket, a vacant house in your, in your back pocket to go show them after you talk about like how great of a time it is to buy. So create the opportunity. And then when you're talking to them, after you've set the motivation you need to, or the appointment, you need to find out what location and motivation they have. So that's how we're going to meet them somewhere because we're going to find out where they want to be. But when you got them on the phone, find out what their motivation is. What are you looking for? Ask the questions, how long, the, my favorite question right now is how long have you been looking? And if somebody tells you, well, I've been looking a year, it's like, oh, okay, cool. So I need to probably distinguish if they're working with another agent right now. So how have you been looking at properties? I mean, going to open houses, is any other uh, realtor showed you homes? Ask these non-threatening questions to develop rapport so then you can meet the need that they have that they haven't been receiving from somebody or from the marketplace. So ask those leading questions that are non-threatening. Don't ask, oh, are you working with an agent? Boom, red flag. This person is just trying to win my business. They're not trying to help me. They want a paycheck. Like stay away from those red flag questions. Hey, I need you to sign this buyer broker agreement. No, no, no. You know, 
for transparency, because you need to see what my commission is in these days, NAR and Cal and in my case, California Association of Realtors would like us to sign this agreement to bind ourselves together so you can see behind the curtain and understand what my payment is so I can work harder for you. Um, not I need you to sign this red flag compared to, wow, this guy is or this girl is really trying to work for me and benefit me. So find that appointment find that location that they want to be, find the motivation. And then I, and this is just honest, today is the best time to buy a house. So when you're qualifying somebody, if they're like, ah, I'm six months out, why? why? Why are you six months out? That's okay to ask. Why are you six months out? Why are you a year out? I just like to see a little more certainty in the market. So I just want to decipher, no matter who wins this coming election, you still plan to buy in six months. Is that correct? Yeah. What if I told you that we may have a market influx? The market may be flooded with buyers. Price points may go up. Competition will be will be heavier. Would that change your mind about buying in six months? Well, I probably just need to be more aggressive. Why don't you buy now at a lower price with less competition? You get to choose where you want to be instead of reacting. So those are the questions and the conversations that I'm trying to have on a, on a daily basis and kind of uh, instill into my team, because that is, in my opinion, it's real estate for dummies. It's getting people down the funnel. Everyone that comes in is at the top of the funnel. We either want to get them down or get them out. If they're arguing with you right now about signing a piece of paper about seeing a house, if they're arguing with you about your commission, if they're, if they are being a pain in the rear end, it's probably not somebody you want to work with and unless there's an outside, you know, force that's like, oh, they're buying a $5 million house. I'm okay to haggle. Um, but if if they're a difficult person, if somebody that you don't find that you want to work with, or they're not giving you the signs that they're a pre-proof buyer, get them out, get with the quantity, get them down the funnel, get them out of the funnel. I don't care if you have 90 people outside of the funnel and one person in, close that person, focus on what's going to make you money. Don't go out and focus on your, uh, you know, your email, begging people to come talk with you about, uh, you know, interest rates or whatever, like that's, that's not going to get you anywhere. In my opinion, you need to find the people that are motivated and focus your time on them. Sorry for talking. So okay. I, I'm, I'm fired up no. on this stuff. I love it. Listen, I love that because we have to get fired up and we have to apply ourselves, you know, because from the words that you speak every day, you guys, that, that sends a vibration into the universe and if you keep saying hey i can't find buyers or i can't find motivated buyers guess what it's not a secret you will not find motivated buyers you have to start putting yourself out there and attracting motivated buyers and manifesting motivated buyers and motivated sellers and there's a lot of people out there listen life can change in an instant in an instant i've had sellers before say I, I'm not in a hurry. I don't care if I sell in the next six months. And then them call me a week later and say, I got to get this sold. So something triggers it. You don't always know what's going on behind the curtain. But I love what Ross had to say. You know, you have to ask questions and try to understand when, when you're building that relationship, what is best for that client? What are they trying to do? Give them some insight because there's so much misinformation out there I mean, you can read different articles every day. One article says the market's going up. The other article says it's going down. The other article says inventory is building. The other one says there's no inventory. I mean, it's crazy. And people don't know how to distinguish on what's, what's right and what's wrong. But to find your ideal buyer or your ideal seller right now, you should write it out. Write it out. Write a paragraph on what is the ideal buyer for you to work with. And I'm not saying just an all cash person who wants to buy today. That's not realistic. Really write it out and then read that three times a day and manifest and attract that person or attract that buyer or attract that seller or attract that investor. That's super, super important. Let's go over to the ROG. He's not just the real estate guy, you guys. He's not even the real estate opportunity guy. He's the real optimistic guy today. And I want to know how he's building his base of business right now in a challenging market, because that's what it is, you guys. It is markets go up, markets come down. Listen, I've been through a gazillion markets, and I know the ROG has too. But how are you finding your ideal customers right now? Give us some tips. 
number one thing that I've done and I've said to everybody that's in my organization around me is raise your own personal standard. Raise your own standard. Raise how you're working. <clears throat> raise how you're communicating. Raise how you're educating. Raise what you want to make. Raise the hours in which you're going to work. Do what other people aren't doing. We get what we have to have, not what we want, what we have to have. If you have to have a heart transplant, you're going to find the money. What do you have to have and make these things work? And go to your clients and be really blunt with them. Say, look, you know, I can sit here and, and ignore it or and, and, and blow smoke at you, or we can have a real truthful conversation. And that's where the difference in raising your standard. We talked about it earlier. We've said it. Be comfortable being uncomfortable in this market. It's not the same market. It's just a market. We've talked, raise your own standard. And there's where the challenge is. We're all so afraid. Just raise your own standard. We have 68 days. You guys were talking about how many days you have. I, I know I have 68 days. It's written right freaking there. I look at it all day long. I come in my office. I scratch it off. I wipe it off on a whiteboard. I'm 67 days, 60. And does it agitate the shit out of me? Yes, it does. Because I get to meet the standards that I need to make for my family, my relationships, my clients, the people around me. We had a little meeting at the office last night. We had about 20 agents in my organization. And they're like, Craig, you know, it's interesting. A lot of people want to talk to me. And I'm like, why do they want to talk to you about EXP? They're like, because I'm excited. I said, you should be. And they said, no, you know why I'm excited? Because you're excited. I said, it's only, as fa the, the, the herd only runs as fast as the lead horse runs. So raise your standard and run fast. I'm doubling down on everything. We bought into the, the, the thing with homes.com as a member. We bought into the Zillow stuff of all the showcases. We're doubling down. I'm meeting with Pete down in EXP to raise our bar on a luxury website. The bottom line comes down to it is now's the time to buy in, clean up your crap, and do it right and raise your standard. Everybody else got their head in the sand. So I know it's a little bit of a tangent. You want to know what I'm doing? I raised my standard on me. And there's where my problem is. I want to be better. So it's just a matter of what you want to do. I love that. Put your head in the ground. Listen, that's, that's why he's the ROG. Listen, he's telling it real. That's it. That's it. That's what you got to do. I love you. <laughs> you know. Well, Dude, keep so in mind, and and I want to I want to expand on what what he just said, you guys. And if you're out there, and I know a lot of people are like, hey, why well, don't have the money to invest? I don't invest in yourself. There's this thing I don't know if you ever seen it. It's called YouTube, and all the shit on it's for free. You can watch all types of stuff invest in yourself. Warren Buffett said it best. If you want to make the best investment in life, invest in yourself. You know, are, how are you showing up? What is your mindset like? What are the three things you're trying to accomplish before 9 a.m.? What's your routine? How many calls are you making? Outbound calls. How many inbound calls are you making? How many people are you getting in front of belly to belly? What type of conversations are you having? Are you seeing the inventory? Do you know it inside and out? What's happening in your market? What just got listed? What just went pending? What sold? Can you name it right off the bat? Because here's the deal, you guys. You have the power <clears throat> to make your own market. But you also have the power to not make a market. And that's how you have to have that thought process. Because the battleground isn't finding the ideal buyer, the ideal seller. The... The battleground is finding the ideal worker, the ideal professional in you. And that's that's right here. It's, it's between seven and a half inches. That's all that's how far it is to determine that. And that's what we, and look at nobody's on here saying that they haven't had bad days. We've all had bad days. We've all been in bad markets. There's been times I haven't sold a house for four and a half months. But guess what? On the fifth month, I sold seven houses because I didn't give up. If you don't quit and you don't give up and you keep clawing, you keep grinding, you will make it to the end zone. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you will score. But if you give up and you say, this is too difficult or this is too hard or I'm spending too much money, double down. 
Double down showing up, double down going there. What I'm seeing right now is most people don't show up. And the ones who do, they show up half-assed. They show up like already defeated or complacent or it not working out. And I'm not trying to go on a tangent either. I'm just trying to give sound advice from 32 years of grinding it out and pounding through it. And I know how you feel. I've been there. Um, but I just keep making the calls. I keep staying positive. I keep asking for the order. Don't be afraid to ask for the order. Most people are afraid. Oh, look, yeah, go home and, and why don't you think about it and let me know. No. Why don't we discuss it right now and how to get you in here and make money and alleviate your taxes and do this and do that. We can do it right now. Sign right here. That's it. Well, do you think they'll take it? I don't know. I don't own the house. If I did, we'd have this done in 30 seconds, but I don't own the house. That's it. That's the main thing. Now my wife's yelling at me because she says I'm yelling because I'm getting so excited. See, Bostonians don't yell. We get excited, right? Lurchy knows. He's like my cousin. Don't take, from another don't take my loudness as being mad at Take it as being excited. Exactly. Hey, Pete, I wanted to, real, real quick, people want to work with people that are busy. Go back to all the sales you've done in the past year and repost them as sold, buyer represented, represented this buyer to find a home. Are you looking in this market? A key point also that somebody, and, and we're doing now, everything we post, it, we're going in and being the first response. Hey, if you need more information on this house, where homes like it, click here. So now what we're doing is we're doing a double algorithm and we're giving them also a list of other houses that are like it. So my VAs are doing the post and then an hour later, they're doing another post and they're actually tying a, a, a call to action with other properties or like new construction or whatever it might be that could get them to want to raise their thing. So multi-level on what you're doing from the past, people don't remember what they had for dinner a week ago. They're not going to worry about what you sold a month ago repost the stuff. If you've got nothing now, revamp it, recolor it, redo it, repost it. This is when you want to show busy. Sorry, for, I know Cam. Yeah, I mean, me listen, I and I, I disagree with the busy. It's my most hated word in the English language. I think you have to be professional and scheduled, but people yeah. want to see you active, fully active. They, want active. they don't want part-time people. They want fully active people. So I love that, Lurch. You got to get it out there. What I would do, and here's a quick tip, is go to two houses that have sold recently. Grab something. It's really tough, right? It's called an iPhone. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It was designed in 2008 by this guy named Steve Jobs. He worked for a company called Apple. And you take it and you film in front of the house and say, guys, remember I told you about this house behind me, that it was coming on the market for this and that? I got a news update. It's sold. It's done. The deal is done. This was the deal. This is what they were asking. This is what it sold for. This is the specs of the house. I have two more like it. And guess what's going to happen to those? Those are going to sell too, unless you take action. Call me today. I'll get you in those houses before you see another video like this of me showing you what's selling. That's it. They don't know if it's your listing or not. That's why we're all part of the MLS. It's called the multiple listing service. The multiple listing service means that any of those listings on there, you can use. <laughs> Always acknowledge the other agent, but you can use them, you guys. It's all creating perception, right? And that's going to give you a different perspective on the market that's going to create urgency, electricity, energy, and momentum and motivation to get things done that you need to get done. So don't focus on what you don't have. Focus on what's coming to you and what you want. That's the main thing. That'll expand. So that's the key. Anybody else want to add anything? We got three minutes left. I'm already I got yelling. One thing my wife jumped in the house because I was too loud. Keep going. <laughs> I got one I wanted to jump in on because earlier I said that we can't motivate people, right? That's what I kind of I made a very solid statement there, and I'm wrong. Okay. After listening to these incredible guys on this panel, and obviously we don't have any ladies on today, but they're just incredible. And listening to them, I was wrong there. You can't motivate them, but what you can do is educate them. Right. And that is what I do when people are talking about how do you convert or how do you qualify these prospects is I do things like educate them with my experiences, telling people like, um, you know, I got my real estate license at the very beginning of 2008, um, obviously family, household, multi-generation agent. But I started the business in the very beginning of 2008 and it was rough. But any buyer that bought a home in 2008 and still owns it today is doing just fine in it. 
Okay. So when you are working with buyers that maybe you're on the fence, you need to help them determine and do this by education that is it worth more to hold off and potentially go what happened, what, what happened with my clients in 2019 when I was kind of telling them maybe it's better to hold off. Let's wait and watch. And then the market went up by 26% in a year. Well, those people never bought homes. So is it better for you as the buyer, right? Is it better for you to get in, enjoy the property, use it? We're family, friends. You got to remember, we're down here in South Florida. This is vacation. This is, this is, you know, this is the dream to buy a home down here. Is it worth that to you to buy now and enjoy it? Or do you want to have what happened to a lot of my clients that bought didn't buy in 2019 because they were on the fence? They've never bought them. That's up to you. And everyone's going to be different. But that is a, a great way to educate and kind of help the client come to their own understanding of, you know, is, is, do I want to buy now or do I want to wait? The other thing is, you guys, for agents, and this is big, I know we're right on the hour, you can focus on other markets here in this amazing company that we're at, okay? Southwest Florida has been a slug in these past 18 months. My Georgia partner, they're doing 40 homes a month. My Ohio team's number one in the whole state right now doing, you know, I think they have 10 million pending right now, just crushing it because markets are different. We enable you, this company enables us as agents to do that. So that is a money-making activity. If you're not, if it's not clicking, you're not having the successes in the buyers and sellers, try to find a try to find a partner somewhere in a hot market that, wants to partner with you. And that's been something that, uh, you know, has been really great for, for our group. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's being a true entrepreneur is looking for other avenues and so forth. All right, guys, hey, we're Pete, right at the one, top of the one hour. One last, one Go last ahead, thing Maddie. though. Take us home. So I hear, you know, I think we're, a lot of us are probably hearing from both buyers mm -hmm. and sellers that, you know, I'm not doing anything until after the election. Well, guess what? Buying and selling, both there are it's a process it's not an event right so that's an invitation to start to meet with them right now great you know what we we couldn't get your house on the market before the election starting right now even if we even if we tried so that's totally fine that gives us time to you know to to get the property ready to sell to figure out where we want to price it etc so let's get together and what's your what's your schedule this week etc whether they're a buyer or a seller so that's an invitation. Anybody that says, I don't want to do anything until after the election, or even if they say, well, I'm not probably ready until next year, it's no problem. Yeah, love that. That's that's great tip. Okay, everybody, we'll see you down at EXPCon. If you're not able to make it, we'll report back here with all our biggest nuggets uh, when we get back. I think we're going to not do it on the 31st because I don't know if everybody will be back. So happy Halloween. We'll see everybody on November 7th, all right? So we'll get past the election and we'll share with you our biggest takeaways from EXPCon 24. Make Sweet. sure you find see us. See you guys. Before see you at EXPCon. See everybody see at EXPCon. Sure. Let's go. Let's make see it guys. happen. We got this weekend. Let's get it done. Let's do see some deals. Talk to you soon.